Animating a flower sack is a classic animation exercise. You can find a lot of information about that online. Uh, there are a lot of tutorials about a lot of the specific tools that you can use. I just want to highlight a few things, um, make sure you don't get stuck too much. Uh, I'm going to set up the scene, and there are a lot of ways of animating the flower sack. I'm going to demonstrate setting up using the lattice. Uh, which is a freeform deformation. And in the lecture notes, it talks about using the twist deformer. And a lot of people have trouble getting that set up or even finding it, so I want to point that out as well. So here I am. I just created a new scene. I'm going to go ahead. First, uh, first of all, I want to go in and set the project. And here you see I've got some folders and there's a folder with flower sack models and I'm going to set that as my project directory. Okay, now I'm going to go in and import and there are a number of models here. Uh, we're in Maya right now so FBX would be a good option to import. Bring that in and as you see it comes in very very large I'm going to go ahead and select that and do a scaling. And it's a more reasonable size. The It's also way off to the side. I'm just going to go ahead and center that. Okay, so notice at zero, 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 it's sitting on top of the grid here. If I select the rotate tool, you see that the pivot point is set at the base of the object, which is a good thing to know going into this. That means that any rotations we do of this object will be basically from its base. Right, in terms of setup, a couple other things I want to do. You see it sitting on the grid there. Um, when you render, you won't be seeing the grid. You do want to see the floor. You always want to be able to see the interaction of your character with the ground plane, so you know when it's floating above the ground, penetrating the ground, pushing off from the ground. So the other geometry I want to put in here is a plane. And I'm just going to go ahead and looking at its attributes here, I'm just going to make it a good bit bigger. And I'll just kind of move it back a bit. Now, in order to see the relationship of the figure to the ground here a little bit better, I want to have lighting, so I have cast shadows that give me that information about whether it's floating above the ground or not. So for that, there are a couple things I want to do. One is if I go into rendering, I can select one of these lights. I'm going to go ahead and do a directional light. I want to see it here. So if I go in here, I'm going to use all lights. And now I want to change the orientation of this. A lot of you don't know about the outline panel here. I'm going to select that. This is a really good way of seeing all the objects in your scene and selecting them. So I can select the ground plane, I can select the light. I'm going to change the orientation of the light. Okay, so I want the light shining down from one angle. Now this is giving a fairly harsh effect here. One thing about the directional light is it doesn't 
matter where it is. The only thing that matters is the direction, the angle it's pointing at. So I'm just going to move it over here to the side so it's not um, together with our object here. Now in the viewport, I'm going to turn on shadows so I can see the shadows here. And that'll allow me to orient the light more the way I want. To get rid of this harsh shading here, I'm going to throw in an ambient light. I'm also going to move it off to the side. And it's very bright. Whenever you have multiple lights, you want to control uh, the setting for that. This came in at basically 100% bright white. I just need enough to kind of reduce the harshness of the shadows and shading here. Okay, so I pretty much have my object set up and now I want to start working. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, scene. I'm going to do save scene as. It's going to my project directory. I'll go ahead and bring this all on screen. So I need a file name. I'm just going to call this a flower sack and do a save. All right, now I usually try to save I usually try to save whenever I've accomplished a stage of the animation or anything that I don't want to have to redo in case something gets messed up. From this point on, I'm going to be using the incremental save, increment and save. This will keep several versions of the file so I can go back in time to any point where I, where I did a save and load in the most recent version that I still liked, that wasn't messed up in some way. I recommend saving early, which I've just done, and then saving often. Okay, so let's look at the animation of this scene. There are two deformers that I'm going to use, the lattice and the twist deformer. I'm in the animation menu. If I go up to anim deform, you see it lists the lattice here. It does not list the twist. To see that, I could go into open full deform menu and see all of them. The twist will be listed under nonlinear twist. Okay, so first thing I need to do is select my hero, anim deform lattice. Now I'm going to go in to the box settings here. You have to have at least two divisions for a lattice. I'm going to increase that to three. And I'm going to set local divisions to four. Local divisions gives you a smoother deformation. I'm going to go ahead and create that. And here you see a lattice surrounding our object. If you look in the outliner, you see that there are two things that have been added, the F FD1 lattice and the base. So with the lattice selected, I'm going to show you just a little bit about what we can do here. I am going to hit F8 to go into component selection mode. And there's a lot you can do here. I'm going to use the move tool. There are all kinds of you know, deformations that I can do here. I'm going to undo that. If I grab the corners, for instance, I could create some distortions. So I can get a lot of acting going with this guy. If I select like all of these up here, I can stretch them up, get some different things going. A couple things to point out here. Well, if I stretch this up and select the box, and move it forward. Notice that if I try to move my object and it leaves the lattice, you lose the deformation. So when we're animating this character and we're moving it, 
we want these things to stay together. So what I'm going to do first is select all three of these and group them together. You can also do parenting, uh, but this works. If I open up the group, I can still select things individually. So if I want to work on the animation, I can go in the lattice. So for the animation, I'm going to be using the twist modifier to get the left foot then the right foot moving forward. As that's happening, I just want to create the possibilities for some other animation within this, like lifting, lifting the foot. So for that, I'm going to just go ahead and look at his left foot here. He's facing us. And for some reason I decided he's a he. And I'm going to select these lattice points. With the move tool selected, I can start creating some animation. So I'm on frame one. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You might notice that the corners are up a little bit. So I'm going to have him pushing off of the left foot while the right foot is moving forward. Okay, so I move that down to get a push and I am going to hit the letter S to set a key. Now I did not go into my animation settings, so it's the default 24 frames per second. So I have the foot set pushing off the ground on frame one. And then it's going to lift up and come down again. So frame 20, it's going to be back down. Then it's going to stay down while the other foot lifts up. And then it's going to lift up and come down again. So I'm doing all of the down keys here. And I know that basically every 20 frames I need another one. And I'm just going to take this out a ways. I'm going to do a whole 120 frames of animation here. In fact, that's going to be the entire animation. And now I'm going to go back to the beginning. And so here, halfway in between, I'm going to pan over a little bit. Actually, I think I'm going to have it move out a little bit too here so that it's kind of swinging the foot wide. I'm going to set the key there. So it's down, it lifts up, comes out a bit, and then goes down again. It stays down while the other foot moves. And then I'm going to have it come up again. Set a key. It goes back down, stays down while the other foot moves. Repeat this process. Set key. It's down. Okay, so let's look at the other foot. Make sure I have the lattice selected here. Now, as you recall, I want this to be placed down. So I'm going to go ahead and move it so it's flat on the ground here, so it can be pushing off. I'm going to set a key there. And it's going to return, be returning to this position. So I'm using S to set keys every 20 frames. I'm one frame short. Okay, so if I go back to the beginning, the left foot is coming up and going down. Then I'm going to have the right foot coming up. Set a key. Then it comes down while the other one comes up and then back to the right foot, comes down, the other one comes up, and then another step with the right foot. Okay, so if I play this, we get this going. So we have the lifting of the feet 
Now I want to get the twist in there to get the stepping forward aspect of this.